But first, to one heck of a clash in the Commons. The Prime Minister this afternoon taunted Sir Keir Starmer across the dispatch box, telling him to show some leadership and order Angela Rayner to publish her tax advice. During a fiery PMQ, Sunak insisted the Labour leader should focus on the two homes scandal plaguing his party rather than spending time making jibes at Liz Truss and her new book. The Prime Minister said Starmer needed to get a grip of the situation amid a police investigation into his deputy. The dramatic locking of horns comes after Manchester's chief constable revealed at least 12 of his officers are now probing several allegations against Angela Rayner over her Stockport residence. The police are examining tax records as well as the question of whether she committed fraud by providing false information to the electoral register. Starmer vigorously defended his deputy, accusing the PM of trying to smear a working class woman. All I'd say is he uh, ought to spend a bit less time reading that book and a bit and a bit more and a bit more time reading the deputy leader's tax advice. We've got a billionaire prime minister and a billionaire prime minister, both of, both of whose families have used schemes to avoid millions of pounds of tax, smearing a working class woman. Well, Angela Rayner says she's confident she's done nothing wrong and has promised to resign if found to have committed a crime. This story sort of feels like it's not really going anywhere. Now, of course, a police investigation might result in something uh, big uh, on this one, and she has said she'll resign, but I think there are some quite clever caveats in that, in that uh, some of the allegations um, are too long ago for it actually to have been, for, for there to be retrospective charges brought against her, even if she is found to have done something wrong. Of course, she's been quite careful to say, you know, if she's committed a crime or if she's found to have committed a crime. I I'm not sure how much it's, it's moving any political dials, but she does look guilty of hypocrisy. That's the point, isn't it? Can I just say one of my takeaways from this is that if you were, if you walked into Boots and robbed the store, came out, mugged an old lady, then kicked a Labrador in the head, you wouldn't get 12 coppers yeah. show up. Uh, any day of the week. So quite how 12 officers have been able to investigate whatever this reign of business happens to be. I mean, Starmer's turned it into a, a club. By the way, just for pedants out there, Rishi Sunak is not a billionaire, um, but that's another story. Uh, but to try and turn it into this kind of... He's worth a few quid, though. Uh, try and turn it into a sort of class thing is a bit nonsensical. The police aren't investigating this because a lone Tory MP decided to open up a, an avenue of complaint. She may have done, she may not have done, but it's the hypocrisy bit that will get her because if this was the other way around, she will be the first shouting from the rafters, even if it's only over 1,200 quid or not filling in a form properly, she'll be the first up there talking about Tory scum and the hypocrisy and they'll do anything to trouser a few quid or avoid what they have to pay. She will be number one in the line and that's the problem, JJ and But she has said if she's broken the law, yeah. then she'll step down. And you can't say fairer than that, because when the Tories have done similar things in the past, they haven't made that declaration that if, if I found to have broken the law, I'll step down. Now, it may, I know there's more allegations the police are now investigating, but it may be the case that she's broken rules, but hasn't, but then isn't actually uh, in breach of breaking the law. That's still possible. So she may still be in trouble with HMRC and pay off the bills, but she hasn't actually technically broken yeah. the law, so then she can keep her job. Um, but I feel like Starmer wanted this to go away. He thought it would go away. It's not going away. Um, and he needs to, if I was him, I would just come clean now and say, I don't fully believe her, but it's up to the police to I think he'd be quite happy, Isabel, to get rid of uh, Angela Rayner from the well, front Well, she's bench. a bit of a threat to him, actually, because yeah. she's far more interesting, far yeah. more engaging, far more photogenic, far more, frankly, pretty much everything. Um, this has gone on way longer than I thought. I mean, yeah, it's actually yeah. remarkably... Long for its longevity, this story, because it isn't that big a deal, you know. Mm. Frankly, I think that the Prime Minister's wife's use of non-dom status is far more outrageous. Um, and that, somehow, he survived that. I mean, it's remarkable that he was ever able to rebuild his career after that. That, that was defrauding the Treasury, or not defrauding, but it was um, denying the Treasury of a huge amount of the, money. But it was the legal, idea that the, Prime Minister, that the then Chancellor's actual wife was benefiting from non-dom status, which is a highly controversial, so controversial that now his own government is actually pretty much ditching it or making it more difficult. So I don't think that he can really take the moral high ground. You're right that 
he's not a billionaire. Um, his wife's parents are. Uh -huh. um, but it's very difficult for him to really be on the moral high ground over tax avoidance. I think um, that they thought it would go away and it hasn't. And you think, actually, the best strategy that she could have offered really is say, well, I'm going to step back, sort of a temporary suspension to take the yeah. heat off this. Yeah. Let the police do their yeah. investigation and then come back. It, Ultimately, it, she's going to be a front bench uh, cabinet minister. So having a few months off is going to make no difference to her. She'll come back. It's yeah. not a big deal. Yeah. If I was her, I would just 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 take take the energy out of it. Yeah. Stepping back. But, but you, you say it would make no difference. But I think the um, the Labour Party would feel it would make a huge difference. As Isabel said, she's a great performer. Mm. So to lose her in the run up short, to the local yeah, elections short, and short the run up. Short period of time, they've got the momentum. Take take the wind out the yeah. uh, Conservative yeah. sails because they're keeping this going and they're distracting from some major issues that they don't want to talk about. This is why it's great for Conservatives. Party. This it, is why they're pushing it. And they had, I think they have played a, by, a, a blinder, the Tory <clears throat> attack team, by mm. keeping this going when, as you said, it's not that big a deal, but they've managed to create a great big head of storm about it. They've managed to get 12 police officers working on it, which is extraordinary. And listening to an interview that one of the, the police chiefs gave today where he was pretty much saying between the lines, we've been forced into this yeah. by the Conservative Party, who've yeah. been pushing and pushing and pushing and the saying... The Conservative that... Party haven't got that power, though, to No, but, but, but they oh, can they sort do. of embarrass of the police do. into doing well, something. Well, because the police absolutely. are now... To anybody that criticises the police, the police sort of jump into action because they've previously not jumped into action when there has been something to see. So there might be a bit of a reaction in that respect. I mean, by the way, I don't think Angela Rayner is a great performer. I think she is interesting, as Isabel oh, said. Oh, she's better, right? than, better than Keith. And I, absolutely. Keith. And when she stands yeah. at the <laughs> dispatch funny. box when she debts for Keir Starmer, it's never lost on me that a working-class girl is standing there holding the Prime Minister to account. I think yeah. that's brilliant. I mm. genuinely <laughs> enjoy those moments for that specific reason. But it is the idea of the hypocrisy bit that I think is... Most distasteful, but on the scale of one to ten, it doesn't really hit a three, does it? Can we yeah. just quickly pick up on the fact that you're calling Keir Starmer Keith? Yeah. Could this be a thing? I'm wondering, <laughs> actually, it could be quite damaging, a bit like John Major and the underpants thing. You know? It's if already we, a yeah. thing, though, isn't it? The or, da or David Steele in the pocket. Yeah, if we now those. just start calling him Keith. Let's call him Keith, yeah. yeah okay. we like chinned that. Keith. Well, of course, and the thing that the, the um, Conservative Party constantly do is remind people that he has a knighthood because, according to their focus groups, that doesn't go down well with his sort of working well, class Sir background. Keith, man, Sir man Keith of the people. Sir <laughs> so, so Keith, uh, we're going back to, to Rishi Sunak, of course, you know, we were discussing this time yesterday that he, apart from Rwanda, he wants his legacy to be bringing in this extraordinary new rule that will mean, you know, one person born on one day in the future will be able to buy cigarettes and then a kid born one day later when they grow up won't be able to yeah. buy cigarettes. You know, the, the policy that Boris Johnson said was uh, completely bonkers for you know, the party of Churchill. And, of course, it now looks like a lot of his uh, ex-colleagues from the Conservative front bench thought the same. Uh, Rich Sunak suffered a knock to his authority with half of his MPs last Ooh. night failing to support uh, the flagship smoking ban. So a total of 165 Conservative MPs either abstained or voted against, which is extraordinary when you think this, this legacy policy is going to get through and presumably become legislation off the back of Labour support, not I mean, off the back of not Conservative a, It's support. not extraordinary that half the Tory party didn't vote for this because it's incredibly unconservative. Yes. I mean, most Conservatives are libertarians when it comes to this type mm. of thing. Uh, also, and I was saying on some of our earlier programmes today, I just find the policy really un hard to understand. I don't, I don't get it. What is this weird kind of birthday? Well, thing? ultimately, an 80-year-old man, if you fast forward, is going to have to be ID'd to buy a packet of yeah. cigarettes. I think, and the, the shopkeeper will have to work out. So it's not on. a ban. He was. Uh, well, it's, it's not a ban, a ban over a certain it's age. A ban. Basically, they're changing the. Um, uh, they're changing the age at which you can buy cigarettes. So at the moment it's 16, yeah. and then it will go up to when these when these kids A come of age, born... it'll go up to 17, yeah. 18, 19. So every year the age that you yeah. can buy cigarettes will get higher and higher and higher. So, so the kids born in 2009 will never be, be able allowed to, to buy, buy cigarettes. cigarettes, but everybody older than them can. So you'll go in and you'll have to prove that you're over, you know, in, in 20th time, you'll have to go in and prove bizarre. that you're over 40. Yeah. Jucinda Arden, 
It's yeah, just under. Uh, yeah. real, that's a real well, that, that where it, That's enough. To <coughs> that's all you need to know. Yeah. <coughs> if you want to know a policy that should be in the bin, then that is the, uh, but that it, is the one. But it itself. works with alcohol. Everyone keeps saying this thing about, oh, you have to have them for ID. People got ID all the time for buying alcohol. If you're looking to 25. But, but it's the same age for alcohol yeah. this yeah. year and next year and the year after yeah. and the year after. It stays the same. We'll get used this to is it. Changing we are human. Every single it isn't year. that big a deal. Listen, Nanny Anisio. There is a. There is a scintilla, a scintilla, I say, of good news uh, for the Conservatives, and that is that inflation has fallen to its lowest level in two and a half years. And, of course, this all happened largely because of the economic and fiscal brilliance of uh, Rishi Sunak, <laughs> along with Jeremy Hunt, who, along with their impressive abacus of joy and optimism, sat there at the old oak desk in the Treasury <laughs> and bean counted through the night for the last two years <laughs> to make it all balance nicely. Of course, it has nothing to do with them, frankly. Correct. Bank of England, normal events, the economic cycle did its thing. Uh, but they will claim the victory. He said he would halve it. It's more than halved. Yeah, but, I mean, this is actually bad news for the Tories because we're not going to get the interest rate cuts at the pace that we expected. Yep. We might get one this year. They were hoping, banking on three. They, they probably put the election back, banking on at least two, at least 0.5 cut to our mortgages. They're not going to get that. In fact, it's going to benefit Labour in the long run. But I think ultimately, they, you know, they've got no control over inflation. What's going to dictate inflation right now is what's happening in the Middle East. And we're we'll yes. probably coming on to that later. But things like oil price, things, about, things like um, the freedom of movement for the shipping lanes, if that crisis escalates, you know, these sort of points percentages yeah. are, are irrelevant. Do you know, we're going to see inflation go through the roof. Do you know Absolutely. one of the things that went down in price? Along with things like furniture yeah. and chocolate biscuits and meat, another thing that went down, crumpets. Oh, good crumpets. news. I like, Do you like crumpets? I, I love, love crumpets. Crumpets yeah. are great, aren't they? Good. But they do take remember, ages to but toast. But if we still have inflation, that a crumpet? they take like. a long time. You've got to do several to cycles. Several cycles <laughs> in the toaster. And they, yes. are, and they are basically just a vehicle for butter. That's their all main they are. purpose in it life keeps going is a vehicle. In, for keep butter, it going on, which is disappears. Why they're fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> but just to be clear, prices are still going up. Mm. I mean, inflation but not as fast. Yeah, as yeah. I mean, I have noticed that food isn't quite such a horror show as it was. But now petrol's going back up. I'm going to buy crumpets petrol's, just to, that's just the point. to prove. Yeah, and that's and that's the big the one. Again. I mean, we were talking about this yesterday for Biden and for Sunak. What's going on in the Middle East has a huge impact Massive. on their electoral chances yep. so they domestically crack at on. home. That's why they're spending yeah. so much time in the Middle East trying to calm things down, because yep. the last thing they want is the economic fallout.